Well, good morning, fellow humans of the Tinterweb, and welcome to Auto Addicts. Auto Addicts. So what delights have we got in store for you today? Well, if you can hear me in the wind, we'll see how good these, these wind muffs are. We've got a 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's the uh, WK, the third generation. We've uh, done an XJ uh, Cherokee on the channel before, somewhere up there. There'll be a link, somewhere. Uh, I've had a ZJ before, uh, the first generation Grand Cherokee, which was a great car. So how will the third generation stack up? They were launched in 2005 in the UK. Uh, this one has the 3 litre CRD Mercedes uh, engine in it. It was only available outside of the US. Uh, other alternatives was the 5.7 litre V8 Hemi or a 4 litre straight 6. Uh, much the same engine I had in my first generation. Uh, there was a 3.7 litre V6 as well. But here in the UK, predominantly they were this. The Mercedes CRD. Now, if I consult my book, I can tell you that... It is the Mercedes OM642 diesel, common rail diesel, uh, 215 horsepower, 376 pound feet of torque. That do 28 mpg Imperial, 23 for you Yanks. 0 to 62, 9 seconds, and a top speed of 124. We won't be trying that today. Uh, tow three and a half tons and produces 270 grams per kilometer of nastiness from its exhaust. What else do you want to know? Well, this particular one is in full pimp spec. We've got the big wheels, the dark windows, and the chrome mirrors. The owner, I've been assured, is not a pimp. Um, although he does also own a drug dealer's car, so maybe he's expanding his portfolio. Uh, it's on road tyres, although, as you'll see, this has the Quadra something or other four-wheel drive system that uh, distributes power as it feels necessary so predominantly the power goes to the rear but if it feels it needs it it goes to the front and by all accounts even on road tires these are pretty good um, the track we're on today won't test it by any means but it will get it dirty which is nice 4x4s should be dirty I don't like a clean 4x4 much to the annoyance I know of all you people that only have 4x4s for the school run Let's have a look round it. Here at the back of the pickle, we have nice big twin exhausts, the tow bar for your three and a half ton towing. Reasonable size luggage space, and I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe these, yes they do. You can just open the glass as well. 
which is very useful if you have to park on a hill with a load of apples or something in the back. Stops them rolling out. It's uh, in the back here, we've got some tie down points, a power socket, and underneath this rather heavy panel, is it heavy or is it, no it's just locked in, there is probably a spare wheel or something. And of course, so people can't see your apples before they roll out, a load cover. Bit off, no button. I've got to shut it myself. So, inside, what's it like? Well, it's typically American. We've got lots of scratchy plastics. Uh, the handbrake is on the passenger side. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we've got some some wood. I'm guessing there's probably no tree in it, but looks quite nice nonetheless. Uh, an infotainment system that's very of its time. Nice leather steering wheel. Uh, what have we got here? Obviously we've got the... something going on in the back. Got some various buttons, your menus and stuff which do things over there. Your aircon, heated seats. Uh, automatic and your low range lever there with my keys cup holders obviously and uh, a place to store your tobacco cruise control there on the back of the steering wheel this side we have track up and down and volume up and down on the other side uh, fairly standard instruments Lots of ventilation and it looks like an automatic dipping. Hello, rear view mirror. Somewhere for your sunglasses to attack you. <laughs> we'll find them in a minute. Power outlets, cigarette lighter. Obviously all your mirrory things. Uh, memory for your seats because your seats are electronic. See, I can go... like so and there's a door handle there as well in the back got a reasonable amount of headroom nothing major over six foot might find it a bit tight leg room is a bit lacking however I will say this seat does move back when you turn the ignition off so this seat would be further forward to me driving Grab handles, vents, seat, seat pockets, pockets, emergency tyre weld, and two tone leather. Is it? Oh, we have an armrest. Oh, look at that. And uh, a pulley out, cup holders for the rear. The Yanks do love a cup holder. So the engine bay is typical modern car. Uh, basically there's nothing to see, just black plastic covers. But uh, there you go, I know you all like to see an engine bay, so there is an engine bay. Enjoy. So what's it like to drive then? Well, bouncing around 
on this lane. As I said, we're not going to be testing the the Quadra Drive 2 system to anywhere near its limit. Um, because I, I don't want to get stuck. It's not my vehicle and I don't know this track well enough. But, you know, we're at quite an angle there. I don't know how well that's shoe on camera, but, you know, we're at enough of an angle to make me feel uncomfortable. But uh, here looks like a good place to turn round. That's probably where I turned round before. good lock on it um, certainly a better lock than the uh, Land Rover's got so yeah just cruising down this lane as you do getting his Jeep nice and dirty like a 4x4 should be it was far too clean when he bought it to me Ooh. suspension's perhaps, just, perhaps a tad soft for doing this at any sort of speed but it's obviously set up more for road use than it is for for serious off-roading but uh, being a Jeep should you want to go seriously off-roading there will be lots and lots of aftermarket suspension kits available for it but for just basic green laning going off on little tracks like this even standard on road tyres it's it's not missing a beat, it's not even trying. Uh, the only thing I am a little bit wary of is uh, bottoming it out. Obviously there's no, or I'm guessing, there's no diff guards or anything like that on it. And this track is too long and too muddy to break down on. And I don't like walking, as you can tell by my athletic frame. So yeah, right, so we've done off-roading, sort of. So now, on-roading. Eventually. Well hey, let's follow an ST Fiesta. Right, so, pulling away. Yeah, nice. You can feel a nice bit of torque there. It's got you know the low down torque you'd want from a from a diesel like this. It's quite comfortable. Um, seats a little bit slippery, but then they're leather. There's not a huge amount of feel from the steering. Um, so, uh, you know, common enough thing on four x fours. You don't want them to feel too precise because you'll break your fingers when you're off roading. But it's it's precise enough you can make it do what you want uh, there is a bit of wind noise but you know this is an older uh, four-wheel drive obviously you know the aerodynamics are, are not exactly great that 
typical sort of powerful diesel Mercedes sounds, similar to what you'd get on a Sprinter or anything like that. It sounds quite nice. Uh, I don't know what other engines they used the OM6, some other number engine in. 402. 402, four, something, yeah. Um, but uh, what's it like on the dual carriageway? Quite a pleasing indicator sound. It's a five speed box in this. So, foot down, kick down. That's no speed demon, but it's no slouch. Gets up to cruising speed quite nicely. That's uh, the legal limits on a dual carriageway in this country, 70 miles an hour. We're doing about 2,400 RPM. So, it's a lovely motorway cruiser. Got somewhere to put your arm. Seats are comfy. Just put it in drive and waft along the countryside. There are some little buttons up to the side of it, so if we uh, just press the minus. No. Aha, no. Push the lever to the side. We drop it down fourth won't let you drop it down to third because it knows the thing back up the drive so you've got a bit of manual control there left and right on the lever for up and down the gears so uh, what are the negatives on it well as I've said the interior quality is not perhaps up to its German rivals but uh, if you're buying it for the school run, that may be a problem. If you're buying it for off-roading, that's a good thing. Easier to clean down. Um, honestly, that's probably about it. I mean, being typically American, again, there's, there's more bings and bongs in it. Well, there's more bongs than a Amsterdam cafe, but it, it's... Again, just American cars of that period. My car's exactly the same. Um, they all like to bing and bong. Uh, warning stickers galore. Because Americans are stupid, but apparently. I didn't mean that, Americans. Don't shoot me. Well, probably didn't mean it. So, round around about. There's a bit of body roll and it shuffles a little bit on the undulations of the road, but then it's not a Lamborghini. It, it's it's certainly more composed than the P38 Range Rover would have been, and possibly more composed than the the Range Rover after that would be the what the 377 or 322, whatever it is. Um, so yeah. Brakes. Yep, it's got them. Bumpy road like this. Mm, I think most of the rattles I can hear are from my phones that are doing the filming. Perhaps hear a little bit of suspension noise, but not nothing more than I'd expect in this class of vehicle. probably more 
higher noise than suspension. Uh, we've got quite severe crosswinds today and that's coping with those quite nicely. Looking around, the sun's gone in so I just need to take my sunglasses off. So looking around, uh, everything's laid out quite nicely. Um, it's all within reach. You've got your basic radio and cruise control uh, buttons right on the steering wheel where you want them. All your heating controls are within reach and being a slightly older car, they're actually knobs that you can touch and feel. You don't have to look at them, you can look at the road and adjust your heating. Unheard of in modern cars, but uh, this is still of that age where you can. And being an off-roader, they're nice chunky knobs, so you could use them even wearing gloves uh, or something like that if you're out and about. So it's not as precise on the road as perhaps this competition. Um, I've not driven all of the competition by all accounts. I mean, you'd be talking uh, Volkswagen, tow rag, um, XC90, Volvo, Porsche Cayenne, BMW X5, uh, obviously the Range Rover. Um, I've driven some of them, and it's it's definitely not as precise on the road as any of those. I believe it to probably be more capable off-road than any of them other than possibly the Range Rover. Um, but I think that is just the way Jeep has set it up. It is not quite as road biased as the others. Uh, the others, uh, no one ever expects anyone to buy uh, an X5 BMW or an XC90 um, Volvo and go off-road in it. It just doesn't happen. The closest off to off road they get is a curb outside the primary school. Jeep has a long heritage, as does Land Rover, of actually vehicles that will go off road. And this has perhaps got a bit more off road bias than most of its competition. Not a bad thing. Again, just depends what you want to use the vehicle for. What I would say, in the current market, with these vehicles getting on a bit now, the others have quite a premium on them over this. These are exceptionally good value for money now. So, you have to ask yourself whether you want to pay possibly double or even three times the amount for an X5 BMW over one of these, is it three times as good? No. Now, when you've got a navigator that tells you what turning you need after you've gone past it, you'll know when you put it in reverse, the mirrors do dip down so you can see curbs, the white lines. The downside to that is you can't see further back. So it's not always a good thing. Um, you could probably change it in the menus. You can change lots of things in the menus, the, the wipers and stuff like that. We've gone to get the other key because this one is uh, bent. Uh, got a crack across it and what we don't want is for that to crack in the lock because that would not be desirable at all it would be very undesirable in fact but while we're looking at the key basically you've got lock unlock and tailgate release uh, press the tailgate release twice so I guess once will release the hatch and twice will release the whole tailgate perhaps I'm not sure but it is double locking, so you've got the deadlocks. So for pottering round town, you've got the standard, you know, high up um, driving position you'd have in any 4x4. One problem I've just found is if you move the sun visor down, it comes too low to see anything, and the sun still comes through a gap at the top. But I find out of a lot of modern cars. 
So 30 mile an hour coming into a 60. <coughs> Floor it, kicks down. 60. So yeah, it does pull well. That kicks down nicely. Which surprises me to be fair, I've driven a diesel, that diesel ML. I don't know if it has the same engine as this or not, but I think that was a 2.7 diesel, though I could be wrong. And that didn't pull as as well as this. Doesn't wander too much. Just one thing the Land Rover definitely does, it wanders a lot. Well anyway, that's the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee WK third generation with the three litre CRD diesel engine only available outside of North America is it worth buying yeah they're cracking value for money at the moment far cheaper than the uh, obvious rivals the Mercedes diesel I have no idea about the reliability of them but it it seems a good engine it's nice and torquey the gearbox is nice um, it, uh, it does everything you want would you be more comfortable in some of the competition well of course you would an X5 a Porsche Cayenne an XC90 Volvo and as I say them, a Porsche Cayenne and Lexi 90 Volvo drive past um, are going to be more comfortable, more refined, better quality materials inside. But for that very reason, you wouldn't take them off road. Uh, just the tyres on, on an X5, if you smash one of them on a flint off road, you are going to cry for weeks. Possibly years if you're as tight as me. This is just a much more usable vehicle. You're not going to worry quite so much if it gets dirty. There are lots and lots of aftermarket things available for it that won't be available so much for the rivals because they just never go off-road. If we're honest, while they may have gone off-road occasionally on a press launch, they were never really designed for that. Jeep were. And as I said earlier, these are a fraction of the price of a lot of the rivals, but they're not a fraction of the car. I came into this not expecting a huge a lot. I liked my old um, first generation Cherokee. It was a lot of car for 350 quid back then. I'm not a massive fan of the sort of pimped looks of these later ones. I think just for that reason they're sort of become synonymous with sort of the pimps and the footballers and things like that. Um, but I, I'm, I've been one round. It's a far nicer drive than I expected it to be. The 3 litre diesel is a far nicer unit than I expected it to be. And knowing what the owner paid for this versus what he would have to pay for any of the competition, I'm extremely impressed. So I have been won over. And on that bombshell, as Mr. Clarkson would say, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Tell me below your thoughts. Do you like them? What one of the variants would you go for? And if you would go for one of the rivals, would you take it off-road? But uh, most importantly, come back in a fortnight for another video. And I'll see you then. Ta-da!